Now stay tuned for the feature of the day. All right, now today's feature is called Cell Art. That's not S-E-L-L, -L, as in selling your artwork. This is C-E-L, and C-E-L is short for celluloid. Now, celluloid sheets were and still are used in animation, and I've got one for you right here to take a look at. Now, what it is is a clear plastic sheet that fits over a constant background, and it's drawn on one side, and it's painted on the other side. Now, it takes many of these sheets, photographed in succession, and played back to create the illusion of movement. Now, the amount of these that it takes for even an eight-minute cartoon is in the many thousands, and for a feature-length film like you see in the movies, in the millions. Now, even though there were millions of these created, they've become very rare, valuable, and collectible. And now they're even making them from scratch, not like the ones you saw in your favorite cartoons, and they're being signed by cartoonists everywhere. But you and I, we can make our own, and that's what we're going to do today, make our own cell. Now, first thing you need is an idea, and the reason for that is because without an idea, there's no reason to pick up this pencil and draw. And my idea is, I'm going to draw a golfer. So I've already created the background of a golf course, and now I'm going to take a piece of tracing paper and lay it on top of this background. All right, now I'm going to draw the character right in the center here. And here's his head, and this is a great action pose. And come down for his foot over here. And I'm drawing over the background so I know exactly where everything is going to be. Now, I couldn't draw something that was over the tree. You have to make sure that you're not, in some, something's not in the way. That's why you're drawing it over the background. All right, now I put the golf club in his hand and the features in the face like that. And there you have it. Well, that's the idea. All right, now in the interest of time, I've got one already finished for you. And it looks like this. I'll lay it right on top of that background, and there's the finished golfer. So this is the tracing paper stage. Now the next thing is you want to get a hold of a cell. Now they still call them cells, but I think that's for traditional reasons or nostalgic reasons, because now they're called acetate sheets, and they're made out of this acetate, which can be bought in an art store in sheets or tablet form. And here's what you want to do is lay it on top of that tracing paper, and we'll remove the background, and we're going to ink it in. Now what you want to do, you want to register this by taping it down. And registered means always in the same spot. All right, because you don't want it to move. Now the next thing you're going to need is a marker. And it's important that you get a waterproof marker, one that will adhere to the plastic sheet. Now I've got a nice chisel point there which will uh, give me a nice thick and thin line. All right, you ready? All right, ready to ink in the cell. And we'll start with his head. Now you know it takes 24 frames to pass through the projector of one second of watching time for us. Can you imagine? That means that it takes 24 of these cells to pass through the projector to make that one second. A lot of work, huh? Now some studios actually only made 12 drawings and photograph them twice to get to 24. Now when you see that kind of animation, it's a little stiffer than the ones that used all 24 drawings because that makes it a lot smoother when it's done that way. But most people can't really tell the difference. And it makes it a lot easier. All right, now, for the sake of time again, I've got one all finished of the inked in stage. And it looks like this. And there he is. Now let's lay this down right here. And we work from the reverse side. So I'm going to flip it over just like that. Now the next thing we want to talk about is paint. And you want to go to an art store and get a, an acrylic paint, a water-based paint, something that uh, comes out of a tube because that's what's going to stick onto the acetate. All right. Now the other thing you're going to need is a brush to apply the paint. And I like a nice sable hair brush. Now, they can be pretty expensive, but I found this one here for just a few dollars because they come in all different grades and price ranges. You ready? And we're ready to start painting in now. 
And I'm going to use a little bit of red for his sweater. So here we go. And you want to try to keep enough water in there so it's got a nice creamy texture to it. And we'll do his sweater right here. Now in the old days, top animators that you know of today actually started as cell washers. That's right, they used to reuse these cells after they did all this work to them, especially during wartime when some of these materials were uh, rare. Then they would graduate to assistant and then eventually a top animator. Now you want to blob this paint on, that's very important because you want it to be opaque. That means that when you turn it back over, you won't be able to see through it. Now, I hope you're getting a sense of how much work it takes to finish even one cell, let alone thousands of them. Now, I've got one already finished for you to show you. And it looks like this, all oh, nice and shiny. There he is. Now, I'm going to lay this over the background. And you'll see what that looks like, just like that. And now it's time for a frame or a mat, and look what that does to enhance this drawing. I think that looks great. And there it is. Now, cells are so bright and vivid and shiny, and it's something you'd be proud to hang on your wall, or give to someone in your family or your friends. Now, visit me on my website at brucesplits.com for more information on this project and other neat cartooning tips and other crafts and other neat things as well.